What's up, YouTube? This is the Owl, and uh, I'm pretty excited here. We're going to do another shootout with the uh, Panzer EG200. And uh, I'm just evaluating my loads, and I'm using a little bit of uh, physics to do that. So the, uh, the EG200 is the, the break point between the light cylinder, the light piston, and the heavy piston is um, 1.5 ounces or 14, 15 feet per second. And this is a mass and this is an acceleration. So, you know, without worrying about units, we can get a general force number from what they've provided here. And, and they, they could have put this in their manual too, which, which may have been kind of useful. But their force number, okay, their, their break point between the light piston and the heavy piston is 2175 unitless okay just 2175 now all the units on all these shells are the same so we're working with ounces in every respect and we're working with feet per second in every respect so this force number is 1662 remington express 1330 one, one and a quarter ounce okay the luce Force number 1638, and this is double out buckshot. And the Winchester force number, and we've shot these before, is 1600. So, and the Super X target, it's quite slightly faster target load, is 1662. So, the break point that we're working with is 2175. All of these shells are in the 16 to 1700 range. So what that tells me is that, based on the math, I'm going to use the light cylinder for all of these loads. Um, another cool thing that we're going to do today is we're going to shoot 10 more of these. We had a couple bobbles last time. This is all I could find, so we're going to shoot 10 more of these. We're going to shoot some new buckshot load that's pretty light. It's relatively light. We're going to shoot um, some Remington Express uh, hunting load 1330. So this is above the 1300 mark, see? That's why I wanted to use it. Slightly heavier and above the 1300 mark. And then we've got some Super X hunting load. And it's 1330 also. So this isn't target load, but it's still relatively affordable. So that's why I got it. We're going to start with the light loads just, just to get started. Because we, we normally start with the heavier stuff, the larger stuff. So we're gonna start with the light stuff and see how it goes. Okay, so that's our target. That stump, that burnt stump. Then we got a hill, nice hill for backstop and it's all snow covered. You can see what's going on back there, safe shooting. So this is the uh, Panzer EG 200, my, uh, my, my enjoyment. And uh, she's loaded with eight Winchester Super X game load 1330 one and a quarter ounce 1330 feet per second one and a quarter ounce so this these loads are just above 1300 feet per second so i'm hoping in that uh that they'll they'll like cycling so here we go winchester game Right on, right on. Eight rounds, those are all, th th that was a ghost load. She shot eight rounds straight, 1330 feet per second. And uh, she kicks, but she shot him. All right, let's do eight more. Okay, Winchester Super X target, 1330, one and a quarter. And I'm watching the pattern of these things too. So we got the snow, so it'll be interesting to see how they pattern. Here we go. Oh yeah. Freaking sweet. Oh, nice. Okay, it looks like they're patterning about four feet over there, about two o'clock, four feet over. Let's do some more. 
All right, round three, man. Winchester Super X target. This is pretty tight. We got eight rounds in here. They're all ghost loaded. And uh, we're watching our pattern. And so far, they're all cycling well. So that's kind of, feels good. Feels good. All right, here we go. Right on. Winchester target, 1330. Okay, we got two more rounds in that box. So we'll just finish it off here. Right on, here we go. Sweet. Dude, that's a whole box. Winchester target, 1330, one and a quarter. Game load. Well, it's a game load, but. All right, cool. So those are all coming out pretty consistently. At about 2 o'clock, 2.30, at about 4 feet, 4 or 5 feet away. So that's cool. Okay, so uh, we loaded up 8 rounds in the, uh, in the, in the Shotgun Federal Express. Uh, game load, 13.30, 1 and a quarter ounce. And uh, one interesting note is, you know, when you're doing ghost loading, you know, the, the, the new method that I like, is I put one in the chamber, close the bolt, then load the magazine, and then that last round, I push in there as far as I can get it, and it bounces underneath the, uh, the lifter. Now, here's the thing. Depending on the length of the shell, it might not work so well. You might not be able to get it all the way in there. It's down here, the fact that this thing rotates allows me to put, like I can put an extra half an inch in the distance there, I can rotate it out and then rotate it back. It's not, not that big a deal. So that might be actually kind of a convenience for me if I'm trying to go slow to a certain round and I know that I need to, you know, need to have an extra half an inch. I can just roll this out, get it in there, roll this back. I mean, it's, it's not perfect, but it's, that's kind of an interesting, interesting feature of this uh, adjustable length magazine tube, basically. Okay, Remington, 1330, one and a quarter. Let's see how she does versus the uh, Winchester. <laughs> right on. Freaking right on. Did you see that? Boom, 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 boom. Dude, I'm happy. Okay, so those are coming out. At about 2.30, a little bit further on the clock compared to the Winchester. And they're going out another foot and a half. So what I'm thinking is those, those have got a little bit more power to them. So let's shoot, eight, let's shoot eight more. All right, Remington game load, same thing. I ghost loaded it to get that seventh round down here underneath the lifter. I just rotated this out about three quarters of an inch, half an inch, about half an inch. Put that round in there and then just tighten it back up. I mean, you know, you know, just do whatever you think is safe. But if you're paying attention to what's going on up here, that could be pretty useful. All right. Remington game load, 1330, one and a quarter. Let's do this. Right on. That was eight, just about as fast as I could shoot it. So same thing, those guys are over there about 2.30. This is, the Winchester's about 1.30, man. The Remington's about 2.30, and it's like three additions, it's like at seven feet, the Winchester's at four feet. So a little bit more powerful. Let's shoot some more. All right, it's still it's just moving just a little bit, but it's still snug, but it moves. Um, everything looks good. Pins are all in, nothing's walking out. All right, everything is uh, tightened up. This is the Remington, game load, 1330, one and a quarter. 
Eight rounds. I got eight rounds and one in my pocket. So we'll be doing that. Okay, right on. We got a lifting malfunction there from the magazine on the last round. And I'm seeing contact on the lifter. I'm seeing contact on the shell on the sh on the shell lock too. The shell catch. Okay, so I hit the shell catch, and she bobbled a little bit more. All right, there we go. So that was kind of interesting. It's just, just lightly stuck in there, man. And it was like lifter, shell catch. All right, here we go. Last shot. Sweet. So the Remington shot really good. I mean, there was a bobble in there, but it seems to have just, just plenty of power to shoot. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, let's shoot something else. Let's do the, uh, the fancy buckshot, huh? Okay, this is the uh, Luce, Luce double lot buck. It's 1365 feet per second. And it's 1.2 ounce. So it's just under a quarter ounce, one and a quarter. And we got seven in the in the shotgun. Here we go. This is the buck, man. You ready for some wisdom right here? There we go, man. Seven rounds, double up buck, Luce, 1365, 1.2 ounces. Now those fell real short here, which is kind of interesting. I got one, two, three, four. They're coming out two o'clock, 2.30, and they're only about two feet away, which reminds me, I got three more of these things. So let's just do three more here. Oh, and a Remington Express. Okay, that's where that, lo that, that, that shot went. Okay, here we go. Three Luce and a Remington Express. All righty. Okay. We got another jammer in there. Once again. Contact with the shell catch and the lifter. Let's see if we can just ease her out of there. Okay, so she's rubbing on something there. She's springs pushing her out, but she's she's definitely caught up on something there. That's kind of interesting. There we go. Okay. Yeah, so just getting caught there in that channel between the lifter, the shell catch, and the wall of the receiver. It's kind of interesting. All right, let's do this. One last round, that's Luce. Shooting the Luce, 1365, 1.2 ounces. All right, sweet. I'm pretty happy about that. Okay, cool. Let's shoot some more. All right, this is the uh, Winchester Buck that we shot last week. 1,600 feet per second, one ounce. So it's well within the range of the small gas piston. We got seven in the chamber and a couple in the pocket. For some reason, I'm only, I only got nine. There's like a shell rolling around somewhere in the truck. All right, here we go. Winchester Slug, right on.
Freaking pretty sweet. That was seven right there. Eight. Nine. So this is going to close off the day. Last two. Let's see if they cycle. Will the magic prevail? No! Check it out. Same deal. All right. The shell catch, man. The shell catch is definitely pressing up against that shell. The shell is going like this. The shell has got an angle up like this. Shell catch is right here. Pressing against the shell. The shell is kicking down like this. It's like four-fifths of the way out of the magazine. See that? So it's, and then I push on the lifter. She's still stuck in there. Okay, shell catch is right up against the shell there, man. So that's kind of interesting. So I'm sure that, I'm sure that uh, we can just, yeah, loosen this up. There we go. Okay. So that was, you know, Panzer. Here we go. Last shot of the day. Gotta love it. Thank you, Panzer. Sweet. All right, dudes. It looks like the slugs, the slugs are a red shell. So it's kind of hard to tell, but they're definitely at least four or five feet out. And everything seems to be between 130 and about three o'clock. So this Luce, this Luce stuff was the weakest load from what, from what I'm seeing. Right on, dude. Time for some cleanup. All right, man. There you go. I'm loving it. Always take care of your home. All right, we gotta check this out, man. Okay, here we go. Oh yeah. Blasted it. Oh. Blasted it. There's a scatter pattern. Dude. So we all right so just a quick recap I, uh, I reviewed the footage and uh, she shot really well today part of that was because uh, we're using loads that were all above 1300 feet per second you know the Fiocchi was uh, was a, a sub 1300 feet per second load and it cycled just fine that was Fiocchi target it was like uh, 1280 feet per second and a one and a quarter ounce or one and an eighth ounce. So, but the wind target the, or the Winchester game load and the, the Remington game load today shot well. And they were at 1330. The, uh, the Luce buck shot well and the slug shot well. Now we had three of the same malfunction and they were all on the last shell from the magazine. And a lot of our malfunctions previously have been last shell malfunctions. So that's telling me possibly that there's, there's a little bit of an issue there with spring tension. However, most of those malfunctions were, were malfunctions above the lifter here as the shell was leaving the magazine it would get caught and what i've noticed is that moving the lifter doesn't free up the shell so it's not an it's not a lifter contact issue because i can bobble the lifter and the shell will still stay stuck in there but what i did notice is that pushing on the uh, bolt release 
caused the shell catch to move a little bit and that allowed the sh shell to ease forward a little bit so there's definitely um, some tension on the side of the shell catch after the shell has passed the catch okay because the shell catch is right here so after the shell has passed the catch about you know two-thirds or four-fifths of the way it gets caught and I noticed that it takes on an upward angle when it's caught because the lifter the shell catch the wall the side wall of the shell catch is pushing the shell downward and the shell is getting canted sideways like this right and when I mo go to move the lifter it doesn't doesn't solve the situation doesn't resolve the situation so, so we're getting some pinch between the receiver wall down here and the shell catch up here and you know that you know that's uh that may be something that i can work out myself it may be something that works itself out with time um, maybe it needs to be polished maybe i need a slightly stiffer spring but another thing to keep in mind is that the lifter and the bolt release and the shell catch that the, all of that functioning goes on back here when the bolt comes back when the bolt travels back it makes contact with at different times it makes contact with all those components so it may be that there's something going on back here that's causing that shell catch to be too far forward during ejection of the of the of the shell from the magazine tube and that it's causing that shell catch to rub up against that mag against that shell so it could be something back here in the trigger group in in this mechanism back here or it, it could just be it could be that the the the, the spring bar because the way the shell catch works is there's a spring bar that comes out it's got a hinge on it and when the bolt comes back that shell catch moves up and down or, or left to right on the basis of where the bolt is back here. So it could be that that angle is just not quite right. But I think we're starting to see what the issue is there. Because when those shells are caught, that shell catch is pressed up against the wall of the shell. And going like this doesn't help to free it up. So it's, it's not a lifter surface issue. It's... It's a, it seems to be a shell catch issue. Um, so the three the three malfunctions were on three separate cartridge types. So the uh, the first malfunction was on the Remington game load, and it was just uh, the last round of of the bot of, of the set basically. And the, then there was a malfunction on the Luce double op buck, and that was the last round. And then there was a malfunction on the Winchester Slug, and that was also the last round. So, or yeah, the last round. Um, in every instance of shooting today, all of the shells were properly ejected from the shotgun. So we. We saw some a lot of instances last time where the shells were getting caught up here in the breach. Um, and so she seems to be cycling much better. But a big, a big part of that is just selecting loads that are not too light, you know. Um, but still some cycling issues with buckshot and slugs just like one of each today so game load a buckshot and a slug load so I, I mean uh that's this is that's all positive because it seems like with proper um you know with with proper user um knowledge and proper shell selection the shotgun's going to work is, is working much more consistently um, so I'm going to check out this issue here with the shell catch. And, uh, you know, I mean, it, it's, you know, I'll just check it out, take it apart, check it out. I'm also going to take the trigger group out and look at that as 
We haven't done that yet. And uh, that's about it. The uh, Panzer EG200. So this would be this would be the first th this testing, the owl testing. This would be the first testing that's kind of showing an actual like real mechanical issue with 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 feeding there. And uh, I'm not too worried about it. I'm I'm pretty sure that the, it's either going to sort itself out or I'll be able to sort that out because it's clearly uh, the 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 shell catch the wall the side the side of the shell catch is clearly tightly rubbing up against the shell there so so that's it i'm loving it and i'll consider today a successful run with my uh my my little friend here the uh, panzer eg 200 right on all right so i just remembered a couple things um that was 70 rounds today it was uh, 70 rounds on the last shoot. That was chapter two. Today's chapter three. And then it was like 80 rounds on on chapter the chapter one shoot. So what that means is that we got like about 210 rounds through the shotgun. So that's cool. Spending some money to work this thing out for sure. But, you know, I was going to be having fun with it anyway. So it's worth it. This is the Owl signing off.